Hi there, and welcome back to A New Way to Age. Today, we are continuing the show on bioidentical hormone treatment. This is the fourth episode in a six-part series, continuing on bioidentical hormones. And today, I'm sitting here with Suzanne, who's a patient of Dr. Walters of Medical Aesthetics of New England. So, Suzanne, we're going to be talking about your experience with bioidentical hormones. So, to begin with, why don't you give us a little history of before you went on hormone treatment? Well, actually, I began menopause rather early uh, in my life, and um, by 41, had a complete hysterectomy. Mm. Um, the, after that, I had uh, uh, symptoms. Uh, mainly, it was depression. Now, I had never had depression before oh, okay. in my life. Mm -hmm. And so I equated that with the fact that it was hormonal. Okay. Um, however, down through the years, um, I received information and treatment from a lot of different specialists that actually w was leaning towards their orientation. One was lupus, one was MS that I thought I might have. Mm. And uh, it turned out negative, oh, that good. it wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. And so I had always thought maybe there was um, a little something to this hormonal, and I had tried bioidentical hormones previously. Oh, really? However, there was no blood test involved. I see. I was just given the cream and okay. told how to use it. All right. Um, it didn't really work because my it wasn't uh, identical to me okay. and what I needed. All right. And so I gave up on that and continued to suffer. By this time, I was on medications, a lot of different medications for different uh, ailments that I had. And finally, I said, I'm going to try bioidentical again, okay. which I did two months ago. I uh, went to Dr. Walter and said, it was determined that I was going to do it. I had the replacement put in, probably, it was two months ago, um, not, or maybe not quite, mm -hmm. but it was immediately when I left his office that day. I saw a little bit of a difference. That quickly. You can't really go by me though because I am sensitive to these things and mm -hmm. usually react to medications or anything else, including vitamins, uh, so very was quickly. It that, that you felt different but or I did, happier? I, I felt what? happier. Okay. I felt um, just, you know, kind of a, a more of a, a calmness okay. that was over me that I had not had for quite some time. Mm even being on different medications. Really? Now, some of the other um, symptoms that I had was extreme fatigue, absolute, and I thought maybe it was fibromyalgia, then I thought maybe it was chronic fatigue. Mm. Uh, both proved negative. I didn't have any pain, just this extreme fatigue. Okay. I was beginning to lose my memory. Uh, it was become very poor, very poor. And I just thought maybe it's age related, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, all of these things very slowly and consistently began to disappear as I continued on day after day. And I can say every day since I had the replacement mm -hmm. put in, the, the bioidentical, mm -hmm. um, every day is a little bit better than the day before. Really? So I'm expecting to even have more benefits. Progress. I can't tell you how happy I am. <laughs> I feel like somebody saved me. Aww. And, uh, you know, it's a wonderful thing. Now I'm looking forward to um, easing off all my medications, including high blood pressure, all those things that I am attributing to the lack of hormones in my body. Mm -hmm. Also, my thyroid was slightly off, which I guess usually can happen mm -hmm. with that. Right. And all of this is now slowly getting corrected. Really? Well, for me, maybe a little quicker than maybe it would some other people, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it doesn't take that long. It really doesn't. For, no, it no. really doesn't. So you saw a marked difference from the cream to the pellet insertion. Oh, absolutely. And absolutely. People don't understand that. I'm assuming they just feel that, you know, whatever the doctor says is going gonna, is gonna to work for them. Yeah. And, you know, I have to give you credit for realizing that, you know, things aren't right. I'm gonna continue with my battle. My woman's instinct is telling me 
that something else is out there for me to do. So congratulations to you on that. I thank you. I'm thrilled. Good. I'm glad. So um, it's only been a couple of months. Mm -hmm. Have you talked to your doctors uh, about being on the hormone therapy and how you've been feeling? Absolutely. Okay. I have talked to everybody that even passes me on the street. <laughs> I say, excuse me, I got to tell you something real quick. <laughs> Um, it's, I've mentioned it to friends. I've met, I mean, we're all hormonal mm -hmm. at this point in our age. And I've mentioned it to my, my doctor. I've mentioned it to everybody. And, uh, you know, I, I hope that at some point, um, they're really, really going to take heed at it or at least look into it a little bit more. Right. My doctor promised me he would. Okay. So he didn't d try to dissuade you. From oh, no. Okay. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Yeah. And I'm not dissuaded easily. <laughs> You're a woman of conviction. That's it. <laughs> um, so what would you say the first thing that you noticed coming back to you and feeling like yourself again? Well, my memory has improved immensely. I would say it's at least 50% better mm -hmm. than what it was. Mm -hmm. uh, the things that I would forget in the short term were amazing. It was very simple things, things that you, you know, people talk about walking into a room and then forgetting why they went there. Mm -hmm. Well, that was just mild compared to what I was forgetting. Really? And um, I would say the fatigue almost disappeared overnight. Overnight? Uh, overnight. Wow. And it was very hard to deal with. Sure. You know, sure. I mean, I am semi-retired. I work part-time. But there were, I mean, there was no way sometimes that I could actually work. Really? I was that tired. Wow. And when it, comes over, when it came over me, it was so severe, I had no choice but to lay down and go to sleep. Really? No choice. I couldn't fight it off. I put it off, mm -hmm. anything. It just, I, had to, I had to lay down. Wow. So you've noticed that that is almost gone, you said. Almost and gone. And it's only been two months it's on the hormone months. therapy. Yeah. So the, your next treatment will probably be within a month or so? Well, um, probably, and I have to talk to Dr. Walter about this, probably, probably so, mm -hmm. yeah. But could be towards the end of March, too. We'll see. Okay. But as you said, you know, feeling this what great on it, knowing that you're going to have another pellet insertion, mm -hmm. that all your symptoms are going to be helped that much further. And the longer that you're on it, the more that it will support. Absolutely. I, I really believe that. Yeah. And I won't live without it anymore. Really? I won't. Good for you. Good no. for you. What would you say to skeptics? Well, sometimes um, people, and, and that's understandable, um, have been flooded with so many different things over the years that, you know, this weight loss uh, thing, that this pill is going to, you know, sure. make you 20 again, mm -hmm. you know, on mm -hmm. and on and on. Right. Then I think that they've put up a wall. And so when you approach them directly about it, um, they're not going to tend to initially maybe listen. Mm -hmm. It's going to take time. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, for those walls to break down and for them to really see, hey, this is making a difference in our friend. Mm -hmm. This is doing something for her. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's just a matter of time. It's unfortunate that the system is that way, but that's the way it is. As you said, yeah. you know, we've all been flooded and skeptical about everything these days. Um, but it's good to hear real life stories about the hormone therapy mm -hmm. for people to, I think it resonates with people when it's a real person right. going and having symptoms that probably most women are having after menopause mm. and hearing how quickly that those symptoms have been alleviated, yeah. it has to hit home at some level. At, at some point, mm -hmm. it's got to, you've got to stand up and say, this is working. Right. This is the, this was the answer for me. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about 25 years after the operation, okay. the hysterectomy, okay. um, that I went through ups and downs and the fatigue and the, and the issues and going to different specialists and I found my answer. It's sad, isn't it? In a it's way very sad. that you had to go through. It's very sad. Mm -hmm. And another thing that might hold some people back um, is the financial. Mm -hmm. Um, the bottom line is, unfortunately, the insurance, medical insurance companies don't recognize the benefits mm -hmm. of this and consider it an alternative treatment. Right. And that's sad. 
That's very it sad. Is. It is. Um, I personally feel that everything in life is one of these. Sure. Priorities, you know, to me, and it's certainly not that I'm a wealthy woman, because I'm not, mm -hmm. but to me, being without the bioidentical at this point in my life and for the rest of my life is I will pay w whatever, and it really is not that expensive. Mm -hmm. It really isn't. Right. You know, it is affordable for most people, and you can do it. And we're talking like every three months. Right. Getting the change. Mm -hmm. So it really isn't that right. expensive. Sure. And I would tell people that and have. Good. That de what price do you put on your health? Right. What right. price do you put on waking up every morning and being glad you're alive? Mm -hmm. Especially where you said you had depression for so long not probably feeling like there is, you know, no use in trying anything else or yep. seeking anything or just, you know, not going on, but just every day it just seems to be mundane day after day. Right. So to have something that has improved that to the nth degree, uh, there's, there is no price you can put there on it. There is no price. No price. Mm -hmm. I would work uh, a second job <laughs> <laughs> to, to keep up with it. It's just, it's just that that much of a value Good. to have that in your life. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm very happy that you found your solution. And I really Thank do. Thank you. You're welcome. And I do hope that other people, women, men even, we have a lot of men in, at Medical Aesthetics mm -hmm. that do bioidentical hormones. It helps them tremendously as well. Uh, I, I hope that they'll take heed. You know, it's the new year. We're all looking mm -hmm. to have those resolutions of becoming healthier and happier. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, this is the one thing I think that might put people at ease for those resolutions and say, you know, this is really going to help you feel happier, healthier, and like you used to 20 years ago. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. You know, there's so many other benefits too. There's the bone density um, issue that happens to postmenopausal women, mm -hmm. and that, of course, is taken care of with the bioidentical hormones. Right. Um, and of course, it's not synthetic. Right, exactly. So you're dealing with nature. You know, people all, all want na natural, whatever's right. natural. That's right, right. And in this day and age, natural is the way to go. Right, right. Great. Well, thank you so much. It's been wonderful to thank have you, you on Terry. set. Thank you, Terry. You're I, very it's welcome. Been, it's been my pleasure, believe me. Thank you so much. Okay. Coming up next will be Dr. Walter continuing talking about bioidentical hormones. Hi again, welcome back to A New Way to Age. This is the second part of the show today. I'm sitting here with Dr. Walter, Medical Director of Medical Aesthetics of New England. We're still talking about bioidentical hormones, Dr. Walter, but we're concentrating on how they help with the heart. Now, most okay. people wouldn't associate that. They think, you know, testosterone and estrogen, but how does it help with the heart? Well, the it, heart's obviously very important. It's the number one leading cause of death in this country. And the concerning thing particularly is about a th over a 1,000 people a day die with normal blood pressure and normal cholesterol, and that's uh, pretty concerning. So the reason we've incorporated this part into the bioidentical hormones is because it's really an objective way of telling what the heart function's like. Um, and I'm gonna show you, this This is just sort of a, as an explanation. Everybody's heard of plaque and um, and hardening of the arteries. And this sort of shows a picture of it here. You can see there's five different pictures and there's levels one through seven. One is maybe a 20 year old who's got good heart health and is athletic. And number seven is a lot of plaque, a lot of hardening of the arteries, a lot of narrowing of the arteries. You can see how the, the opening of the, of the artery in the bottom is very narrow. And that just shows just kind of a picture of what happens with hardening of the arteries and, um, and atherosclerosis. And this device we have here that we've included in with the bioidentical hormones is a, um, a device that will objectively measure that. So it's really a, a nice way of people saying, you know, people don't know what their cholesterol level is, but if they get it measured and it's 150 or it's 300, then obviously there's some concern if it's higher, but they're not gonna really feel any different. And the same thing with, um, with the hardening of the arteries and with the heart, often there are gonna be problems way before people are aware of it. And this is an objective way of See, of looking at that, and the nice thing is we can show them that even just three months later after being starting the hormones, that 
their level, if they're a level three or four, it can drop down one and a half or two levels very often just by getting the hormones regulated again. So it's, it's a way of reinforcing that hormones are important um, and optimizing the hormones will really improve their heart function also. Okay, so what, so what is it really, what is a test? Um, it's, a, it's a very simple test that uh, it, this is, it's hooked up to a computer. This is actually, it's called the Max Pulse. It measures, it's a pulse wave analysis, um, which is a fancy way of saying that it just measures what the arteries are doing and how they're responding to the heartbeat. This little probe goes in the actually the left index finger. Um, I'm not going to run it because the test is three minutes long and the patients have to be quietly sitting in a table and relaxed. And um, it really measures. <laughs> It really measures a lot of different things. Um, we, we will give them a report afterward that looks like this here. Um, and it measures a, a number of different things. If you look at the report, the main thing that it really, that, that's the most important thing is this, this thing that looks like a squiggle over in the middle on the left side here. And that measures level one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, where you stand. And if somebody, again, is a three or four, they can be progressed down to a level two sometimes um, just by regulating the hormones. Obviously, if they exercise and watch what they eat, then that will often uh, improve things. So the, the way I explain this to patients is the heart, um, the heart beats. Every second, the heart beats very strongly. And if you measure the pressure wave of that, it's a very, it's a spike. That the pressure is very high, very fast. And if what's really cool, if you want to do this on your own, is you can go on Google and uh, or on YouTube and look at what happens at the capillary level with the red blood cells. And they'll show videos of the red blood cells going through the capillaries. And they're not rushing through like this with a the heartbeat. They're actually just kind of flowing, and it's like a little river. They're splitting and they're coming back in again. It's kind of cool to watch. So something is taking that spike of pressure between the heart and the capillaries and and leveling that out and what that is is the arteries and the arteries actually are not just static pipes like a copper pipe that's that's under your sink it really when the heart beats the the pipes will the, the arteries will expand to absorb some of that pressure and they have muscles wrapped around them and then they'll contract and they'll push that blood through so they take that spike from a sharp peak like this and kind of just slowly smear it out and by the time it gets to the capillaries the really small small vessels the the red blood cells just sort of evenly flow through that you can imagine that if those arteries that come out of the heart and further down if they're really stiff that elasticity, that, that sort of relaxation and contraction again are not happening and that pressure is transmitted further and further down and that's why people who have problems with the heart arteries they'll often have trouble with the kidneys and other blood vessels because that pressure is getting transmitted further oh, down. Okay, okay. Um, so when a patient puts their finger in, in that, mm -hmm. it, there's nothing that comes out of it, it's just a it just puts there's a on little, the finger. There's a little there's light. Yes, exactly. There's okay. no pain at all involved in this. So you don't feel anything. You just, you know, you kind of watch the monitor. And the reason I'm not doing it here, I, I do it in you, Terry, but you have acrylic nails. And that's one of the things, um, this doesn't see well through acrylic nails. Okay. Other nail polish is fine. Gel is fine. But the acrylic nails, it doesn't work through that. And also, we don't have people do this if they've just had coffee or tea or something with caffeine for a couple of hours before yet. And hours and minimum two hours is better because that will sort of, um, stimulate the sympathetic nervous system and, and generate maybe a false result. Here. Oh, I see, I see. Um, and it looks at a lot of different things. Again, looking at this, this second sheet here, um, what it looks at is besides the wave in the left middle, and it tells you in the left bottom there what type of wave you are, type one, two, or three. If you look in the top left here, it also shows the heartbeat, and presumably your heartbeat's going to be fairly slow when you're having this done. But what I realize through this is we're just sitting quietly in a room and our heart's constantly going up and down because maybe you're just sitting there and you hear a noise in the background is that a phone ringing for me did my phone go off um, and, and so there's some variability in there and that's normal an athlete will really have even though they have a low heart rate it'll be up and down you know the variability of the heart rate will be up and down and that's important um, the other thing that this really does a good job of measuring here is it measures your your stress level sort of at the time by measuring your sympathetic versus a parasympathetic system so the sympathetic is the fight and flight the tigers jumping out of the bushes or so you're walking by a dark alley is there a mugger in there or something mm -hmm. um, you're ready to run and what people don't realize is we don't have tigers jumping out of the bushes <laughs> but it's the stress it's the background level of stress and mm -hmm. maybe there you have a you know you have a big report 
report you have to give next week and you're not ready for it, you don't know how to do it, or your kids are getting you angry, or, or you know, you're late for work or something. So that's going to bring your sympathetic is going to go up. And the parasympathetic balance is that it's, it's the more rest and relaxation. You know, the, 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 the Buddhas that are, they have <laughs> yeah, a very high parasympathetic <laughs> level. And so it really tells you the balance there and it compares it against your peers. If you look on the right middle section here on the paper, it has the pink and the green and the red and the blue. And, it, and it, by doing the pulse wave analysis, it kind of tells you at that point in time what your stress level is. And a lot of people are pretty surprised by this because I think I, I'm here, it's a relaxing office, and, and you know, but it's still 50 out of 100 in this pic particular picture, 46 out of 100. So we'd like to be below 50 consistently. And if you're up at 70 or 80, you're, you're really dealing with a lot of stress. And some of it's physical, some of it's mental. People who are couch potatoes and they're watching TV all the time, they know their physical stress is going to be higher than usual. The marathon runners should have very low physical stress. And the uh, stress resistance is the bottom one of these bar graphs here on the, on the bottom right. Um, and that's your overall stress. The, uh, and this compares it to your peers. The, on the left, the, the pulse wave analysis is really, you compare it against everybody. And even if you're normal, that's probably not very good because you're looking at 60, 70 year olds. You really like to be in the, the, uh, the, the optimal level here for the, for the pulse wave analysis. But the, on, the, on the right side here with your stress levels, they have these little bars and the, the, the pink and the green and the red and the blue. And you're comparing that to your sex and your peers. So you're comparing to other people your age. Okay. Um, it looks, and that's kind of the basic report. And everybody will get a report like that. Um, this is a third page here. It just shows it a little bit better, a little bit, um, a little bit larger what, what the uh, stress analysis is here. Um, everybody gets a report from this and it tells you what all the different functions mean in there. Um, it's, it, what this device has basically been miniaturized. The cardiologists used to use this or do use it and they have you know the $100,000 box sitting in the office and, and this, this device is obviously much smaller here so it's much more portable and mm -hmm. miniaturized. And, uh, so it's a very nice way of looking at something objectively that, and we can show you that the, how, what the hormones do besides just make you feel better. Right. So can a patient take the results of their MAP, max pulse test and bring it to, say, their doctor or cardiologist? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, okay. you know, the cardiologist may not be familiar with this particular device and all the printouts, but what they would recognize is they would be able to recognize all the different um, the pieces, parts to this. Okay, so, do, does a pa so a patient does this initially. Do you do it again a later time to see yes, what the we, results we, are? We offer this to anybody who comes in, but for patients who want to do this with the hormone treatments, what we'll do is we'll do it before they start. That's kind of their baseline, and then we'll do it the next time they come back. Okay. And for women, that's often at three months, and men around five months, so we'll do it at that point. Okay. If your level is a one out of seven, you're not going to see an improvement because one is the best, but if you're a three or four, sometimes it can be pretty remarkable improvement. Okay, great. And who can perform the max pulse test? Who, who can have it done? Uh, or, or do you or do you have to be a doctor to perform it? Um, it, it? Setting this up, what I do is what we do in the office here is myself or someone else, one of the staff, will set this up and, and get it. You know, put the name and everything in here. Then we'll print out we'll print out one of these reports and then I'll go over it with the patient. Okay, and that the, and they can take it home with them. Sure. Okay, both. Of them. And the results are are wonderful. The, I mean, it's accurate results to. Yeah. To yeah, work this off is of. th this is the the pulse wave analysis has been around for 20 years. Okay. So it's just really the miniaturization that that's made this easier for us to do. Okay. Have you had a patient that was completely surprised of their results with the max pulse? Yeah. The problem is if they're three or four, and we haven't had anybody six or seven because usually they're too sick to do the hormone treatments, but um, they get they get kind of depressed, and then we can see the improvement. It's like they're, they're really right. It can right be very reinforcing to them that the hormones are working. Right, because I'm sure, you know, you think you're, you're, you're at the office, everything's great, and then you see this high number. Yeah, because you don't know what your arteries are doing unless mm -hmm. you have it tested. Mm -hmm. So there's other ways that are, that are you know, there, there's cardiac MRIs where they look at the calcium around the heart and, and things that are much more complex. This is a three minute test that gives you a pretty good indication. Great, great, and so you can opt to do this with the bioidentical hormones or sure. is it part of it? You can do it separately. Again, we, we kind of incorporate it if people want mm -hmm. to, to see uh, with the bioidentical hormones, again, because it's another thing besides the blood testing and how they feel that shows them that the hormones are working. Great, great. Well, I thank you so much for today's show. Thank you very much. Um, being on again, it's, it's been great. And I want to say thank you, as I said, to Dr. Walter, along with Acton TV, and to Suzanne, who was on earlier speaking about her experience of bioidentical hormone therapy. Thanks so much. See you again.
Thank you, Terry.